So I posted a short there the other day that said therapy does not fix you. It only makes you more insane. I'll show you the short in question over here on Instagram. Therapy does not fix you. It makes you more insane. You see, you go to therapy to make sense of why your soul tortures you with depression and anxiety. This is hard to understand. Why would my own soul make my life harder? And so you spend all day in your head trying to figure out this complex riddle. And you just want an explanation because explanations bring relief. Your therapist gives you an explanation. You feel bad because you're not open-minded enough about your wife having an affair. You feel bad because you don't love the new world order enough. Your soul is torturing you because you don't have the right gender. And of course, none of these work. So they prescribe you drugs and this numbs your soul and then you don't feel anything. But the problem is, is that your soul had the real answer if you only listened to her instead of your therapist. She's unhappy. She lives inside a coward and she hates you because she sees you be a coward all through your life. And all you have to do is change that. And this got an awful lot of people big mad. This got a lot of people raging in the comments, giving out, saying, this is terrible stuff. This is not true. I love therapy, clutching to their cope, you know. And perhaps some people might be thinking, you know, maybe what Steph is doing is he's creating these short clips that are intentionally trying to say inflammatory statements to make people mad. And I'm intentionally leaving out nuance and stuff like this and not talking about the whole argument. But no, I fully believe what I said in this stuff. When I'm saying this, I mean it. I mean it absolutely. And what I'm going to do is go through the comments to show you exactly exactly what I mean because the comment the commenters the 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 termites that came out of the woodwork really really show you the the problem with therapy and this is a sort of problem in western culture in general so what we're going to do is we're going to dive through the various comments there's some good comments we're going to start with a good comment and then look through some of the bad comments and and articulate talk to ourselves about these people who clutch the therapy so much who clutch the cope so deeply the 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 copium, the 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 <laughs> the opium of the masses is the copium of the masses. Is these type of mental models that are going on. So I guess what I should probably explain to you first is what the short was all about. You know, you can obviously go and run and watch it there yourself. But the basic premise is that therapy does not fix you for one specific reason. If you're in pain, if you're suffering, if your soul inside your body is causing a depression or an anxiety or something like that inside of you. It's causing some type of state of disorder or dis-ease or putting you in a bad feeling experience. Your soul is attacking you, okay? And you have to think about that. You have to be like, why is my soul making me feel bad? What is my soul? You can think of it like Jung's anima, you know? What is this thing inside of me, this soul, that is having this negative influence upon my life experience? And <laughs> it's so funny, but the simplest way that you can answer that question is to just sit down and listen to your soul and push aside the thing that you usually sit in, which is your rational thinking mind, and push that aside and go down and just have an authentic relationship with your own soul. And what that will do is it will bring you down into your instinctive self, in th into things like your conscience, into your intuition, into the obvious realities and truths of your life, your instincts, your gut instincts. And this will allow you to actually figure out what's wrong with you very, very quickly. Because your soul is not a liar. Your soul is actually very blunt and straightforward. It's got this animal magnetism about it. Your soul will sit down and it will look at who you are. And if you're a coward, if you're afraid to go talk to the girl, if you're afraid to go and go for, do the thing you want, afraid to go and become that artist you want to become, afraid to put yourself out there, afraid to say what you actually believe, afraid to stand up to do and do what you want to do. If you're afraid to do these type of things, if you don't act in a way that uh, is strong soul, what ha will happen is your soul will start to hate you. Your soul will start to form a negative opinion of you inside of its and start to, you know, take control of you and fill you full of negative emotions. And why would this be? Because your soul is life force and life wants you to become the most excellent person you possibly could. Life wants you to compete against all other people and assert yourself and put yourself up there as the, the star of the show, the best you could possibly be, to set standards and set the agenda and push yourself out there and be the hero of your life. And this is what your soul is programmed with. In fact, and this is really well scientifically studied, Studied. Testosterone rises with behavior. So, for example, you might think, you know, eat better food to get testosterone or inject yourself with testosterone to get more testosterone. These things certainly work, but liter literally certain behaviors will increase your testosterone. Doing certain things increase your testosterone. In fact, do you ever wonder why prisoners are so jacked? When you compete, your testosterone gets higher. When you win, your testosterone gets extremely high. Specific behaviors increase the feeling of power within you. Your soul responds to action. Your soul responds 
responds to the behavior. So people like, you know, if you want to feel better, you could take a big dose of testosterone, you will feel better because testosterone makes you think clear, makes you feel better, makes you get more muscular, makes all these good things happen to you. And this is why people take things like TRT and stuff like this. And what's interesting is that you can actually stimulate your own internal testosterone from going out and winning, going out and getting the girl, going out and having sex with people you believe are beautiful, going out and succeeding, making money makes your testosterone get bigger. And um, and beating people up in uh, going to fight and beating people up and, and champion and defeating them this makes your testosterone go up competing and winning going into a, a competitive environment where you're trying to to do something to build something watching numbers go up all these type of things these are all going to create a feeling of power inside of you which is your testosterone rising which is your soul actually rewarding you because think about it your 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 hormones and the chemicals inside your body are a tool that nature uses in order to steer you in the right directions nature life which is what your soul is the voice of nature and the voice of life inside of you wants you to win wants you to become successful so she's coded to reward you with testosterone and good feelings and dopamine and all the and orgasms and pleasure and all this type of stuff when you do the thing it wants you to do and so when you go out there and you you go and you succeed you go and do all these type of things your your soul is going to be like thumbs up brother now what's interesting is that the opposite also has an effect if you um if you compete and you lose your testosterone is going to drop people who like football teams soccer teams rugby teams uh, american football teams whatever it is fans who watch football teams when their favorite football team wins their testosterone goes up and when their favorite football team loses their testosterone goes down your team you're literally so wired for this type of stuff that even if your team wins or loses your your testosterone is affected by this and this is how intimate this is this is how deep this stuff goes you if you start to have a cycle of failure around you, if you start to behave in a way that is cowardly, if you, you know, if you want to say something and someone um, tells you no or someone scares you and you, you're afraid to say it and you recoil and you, you, you refuse to tell the truth or someone challenges you and you, you bow down to like, you know, you don't, you, you're too afraid to step up to the challenge and go for it because competing itself will actually raise your testosterone. Winning will raise it more, losing will drop it a little bit, but not competing at all is way worse, you know, cowering out is by far the worst thing because your soul hates that the most your soul says, says that's the, the most terrible thing of all nature hates that the most nature hates a failure nature hates a coward sorry nature hates a coward more than nature hates a failure it's important to keep in mind and so when you go and you you don't compete you don't step up there you don't go for what you want want you are a coward you're a bitch you're you're weak your your spirit is weak you're not able to stand up and do what you need to do your soul will punish you for this your soul will take testosterone from you drop your feeling of power, make you feel worse. And why would it do this? Because nature is starting to realize that she lives inside of a slave. She lives inside a lower form, lives inside of a submissive animal. So she'll drop the, the, the feeling of power inside of yourself and you'll crumple over, you'll hunch over in a submissive state and she will start to morph you and turn you into a, a servant. She'll start to turn you into a lower form, a lower being. And your soul will start to morph you into what you deserve to be because you're acting this way. Okay, so think about this. You'll become a prince, a king, a warrior, a champion, a leader, a master, if you if follow these feelings of competitiveness and truth telling and assert yourself and push yourself out there, this will, your soul will literally, nature will morph you into something higher, something worthy of rulership, something worthy of command. If you are weak, if you are a coward, if you are a bitch, you will get turned into something ugly, something horrible, something fallen. You will be turned into a spiritual slave, which will eventually lead into the manifestation in your life as actual slavery. Now, what's interesting is that this is, I'm intellectualizing this quite a lot, but this is very, like, it's very obvious when you sit down and listen to yourself. You see this stuff easily and immediately. It, like, you don't need any intellectualization. You don't need any books. In fact, the only reason I have to explain this to you is because you've spent most of your life in the education system, which gets you stuck in your head, which makes you think that you need to figure this out with some type of complex, sophisticated scientific riddle. But that's not true at all. Every single person knows this instinctively before they come in contact with any type of books. Every tribal uh, tribe of all in all of time knows that the core to creating a strong personality is initiation into the challenges of bravery. Every it, this is obvious. This is a predicate. This comes before everything else. This is so simple. And all, all you have to do to figure it out is just sit there by yourself and, and look at your feelings and notice what your feelings boil up from. 
Your soul is very obvious. You go walk out into the world and someone disrespects you. You're going to feel that burning up inside your soul. And you're going to want to assert yourself. And the thing is, is that if you're weak, if you're, incap if you're incapable of mastering violence, if you can't box, if you can't fight, if you're, if you're not capable of fighting, you will feel unconfident and therefore you will cower. And then you'll feel those negative feelings. And it's very, very obvious to you. And then what would usually happen to a young guy? Like imagine a young guy growing up in the ghetto who doesn't waste any of his time, um, you know, with book cope. He will go out, he will have these interactions in his life. He will feel, um, he'll feel submissive. He'll feel bad. People will bully him. He'll get pushed around. And then his response is to say to his dad and his dad said, all right, son, well, right, we're going to sign you up for boxing then. Because his dad isn't like, a, he's a working class man. He's not a pussy. He's not going to be like, well, we'll take you to a therapist. He'll say, you know, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to sign you up for boxing. And then the son goes and he learns to fight. He, he gets indoctrinated into the, the reality of trauma. He gets thrust into samsara and he becomes a master of trauma. And then he can inflict damage back. And then all of a sudden the bully stands up to him one day and the guy punches him in the liver or in the jaw. And all of a sudden the bully bullies him no more. And he experiences a boost in testosterone as a young man. He says, I am in control of my situation. And his soul rewards him and says, you did what life is supposed to do. You fight back. You assert yourself. You were getting turned into a cock. You were getting turned into a submissive slave by that bully down the road. And now you listen to your soul. You became a master. Your soul was telling you you're not good enough. That's what your soul was saying. And your soul wasn't lying. Your soul was saying you're not good enough. You're not capable of doing what you need to do. And your soul transforms you and turns you into someone capable of violence, capable of overcoming yourself, capable of overcoming the situation, and most importantly, capable of overcoming the enemy. And so she rewards the, the young guy with, with power, with a feeling of goodness. And there, his therapy is sorted out. Boxing becomes his therapy. Most importantly, he listened to his soul. And his soul told him what he needed to do. And his father guided him as well, which is always an important thing. And then what happens is he does the right thing and he gets rewarded as a consequence and his feelings get answered. And my point, I'm, I'm always stressing this, is that this is very intuitive and obvious when you work with it. It's very easy for you to know what your soul is trying to tell you. The disease, the mistake that has happened in Western societies is we've become noggenists. We've become overeducated. We've become over-civilized. We've become stuck in our heads. And this has caused a fundamental severing from our ability to engage authentically with our souls. We can't listen to our gut anymore. We can't listen to our anima anymore. We can't listen to this dialogue that's happening inside of us. We can't listen to these pulses of feelings and make sense of them because we want, we're stuck in our heads and we want to overcomplicate things. We want to turn things into a left-brained theory. We want to write a PhD dissertion on courage instead of actually just standing up and being courageous. And this is you know, maybe even interesting come from me because I ramble so much about these type of things, but I've always lived my life this way. I've always spent a huge amount of time focusing on facing my fears, focusing on being the best version of myself and standing up and saying things that I believe, standing up and standing into violence, working on my ability to be a capable of fighting, working on, on my ability to be able to deal with fear because I believe this fundamentally. This is my first operant principles. I believe this before I believe many of the reading Nietzsche and stuff like this. These complicated philosophies that I would get into are merely just higher articulations of these things I believe in a fundamental level. Now, let's sit down and dive into some of the comments because what you see is these people are manifestations of this disease, of being stuck in the head. Because what happens in Western culture is your soul, as a child, you have a pretty straightforward interaction with it. And then as you go through the education system, you get morphed into something more and more stuck in your head because the education system puts books in front of you. It slaps something right in front of your face that forces you to stare at the page and comprehend yourself through the page and all these type of things. And then what happens is as you get more stuck in your head, your emotions, your soul starts to get angry at you because your soul is still the primal, natural soul in the deep unconsciousness of your body and your felt experience. And your soul continues to get mad at you. It continues to say to you, you're still a bitch. Yeah, you've read all those books, but you're still a coward. You're still a pussy. You're still afraid to go for what you want. I want you to go talk to that girl because I, I want you to get a girlfriend because I want you to, to breed and create life because this is what I'm here for. I'm here to get you to replicate your DNA. So go get that beautiful girl and get the most beautiful girl you can, the highest standard girl you can and I'm going to 
animate you and make you aroused when you when you th- see them when you think about them when you're around them and that's gonna and then you have to be brave to go and, and, and get them and of course once you go and try to get the beautiful girl you realize that you know there's, you, you have to maximize yourself as an individual and as a man because she'll have so many options that she'll probably like sort of like if you're not like a pretty high standard she's gonna be like nah, nah whatever so this is the thing is that you need to have that fire inside you you need to be able to go and reach the, your soul is going to be pushing at you to do these things at all times and what will happen is as you go through college or you get stuck in your head and you 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 don't take action on these things and you make these inevitable mistakes where you you maybe like blunder or you you act a little bit cowardly or you hesitate and stuff like this your soul like you might even make egregious mistakes where you just never listen to your soul you never go for what you want you never go talk to the girl you never go and be brave you let people walk all over you you let people disrespect you 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 avoid nature you avoid life you avoid all these type of things and what eventually happens is you your soul starts to hate you and you're stuck in your head reading about fucking young or something like this coming up with all these complex PhD theories you're going through school you're reading all the crap that they're shoving into you and then you say well I better go to college college is how I'll develop myself college is how I'll get educated college is where I'll go and I'll improve as a person and you of course you get this snotty attitude where it's like all right well you know I'm becoming more sophisticated more civilized by going to college I'm improving the nature of my soul the nature of my being by going to college and filling my head with more crap and then what happens is you go to college and that separation gets worse you get more neurotic you get in the worst worst state in fact I have a friend and his sister is 30 years old and she's in college still and she's a deeply deeply cynical relationship with the world she is a very bitter nasty way of seeing the world she's jaded she's unhappy she's single she's coming up to 30 and there's all sorts of problems inherently baked into this she doesn't eat properly she has no understanding of her body she has this terrible relationship with her body where she can't really eat properly you know she will call this some type of jargon like oh this is a this is this is you know some type of anorexia or bulimia or some mental health disease or something like this and these things of course are real but think about this on first principle she's she's someone who's very deeply stuck in her head And she obviously has a bad relationship with her body because she can't relate to her body. She can't listen to her body. She can't listen to her soul. She can't listen to what what, what she is. And she's stuck in the education system working on these PhDs and philosophy and all this nonsense. And what has it turned her into? What does it manifest as? What has the great institution of Western culture turned this beautiful girl into? She's now skinny. She's now infertile. She's unhappy. She has a cynical, bitter attitude towards life. And she's at the age now where it's going to get hard harder and harder and harder for her for her to turn these things around she's past she's past the tw- her 20s which are the best year in her life for being beautiful at the highest of her fertil- fertility where she'll have the the most um for- ap- apologetics for men where men will be most interested in her she's now moving into her 30s where she has to literally build herself up from scratch on the defensive this is like you know an athlete deciding to start to become a soccer player at 30 years old you're sort of saying to yourself bro i like uh, you know it's very unlikely you're going to pull this off like there's a rare rare specimen that can really like reach their peak in their 30s like bro like oh my god like, you're in a bad spot man like you're starting now oh you're gonna well, you want to be a world champion boxer now oh bro i don't know about this and it's the same with her she's in that terrible place and all she's done is spend her whole life in the education system and what has it done for her what has it turned her into what does it manifest as it hasn't turned her into a noggin,ist stuck in her head jargonite who's sterile infer- infertile and in all objective standards a failure all because she couldn't listen to her soul all because no one could show her that her soul came first nobody ever sat her down and said to her what what does what what does what does you what do you feel like what 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 does your body tell you you know it's always been noggin'ism stuck in her headness up here intellectualism and what and it's it's turned her into a nihilist this is exactly what nietzsche said was coming for western culture this is the, the manifestation of this prophecy this is what's happening this is the disease that infects us all and all of you out there, you're like this. Because I talk about Nietzsche and I talk about Jung. They're intellectual things. You'll probably come in contact with them in college. I'm trying to red pill you. I'm trying to wake you up. Those places are institutions of failure and disease. They're not going to help you. They're going to sever your relationship with yourself. Before those books, don't think you're smart just because you read those books. I read those books. I don't think, I don't base my intellectual superiority. I don't place my self-confidence on those books. I don't give a fuck about those books. I don't even need those books. I read them for pleasure. I read them because Nietzsche 
which is a great writer. But these are not the things that you should be looking to base your personality and your authority on. Like the, what, what I see so much is people saying, oh, I'm a sophisticated student who understands reality and understands science and all this. It's like you're a skinny twerp. You're a loser. You're a failure. You have no relationship. You're a coward. Do you understand what you're... I've, I've been around these people. I've been around Noggin's my whole life. I meet them in person. You meet me in person, you will come in contact with a well-constituted individual. I'm well-built. I'm well put together. I'm personable. I'm good at communicating. I'm I'm social. I'm relaxed. I'm, I'm kind-ish. <laughs> I'm, I'm fun to be around because I've spent a long time building my personality. I've built a real, you know, avatar, a real metaverse avatar in the real world. I've spent my time going to boxing training, facing fears. I've spent my time working, going to parties, doing all these type of things. I also love intellectual things as well because that's a part of what I am. It's the, the top, if you will. But that's like, you know, the cherry on top. The basis of my work and my self-individuation has happened here. And I meet you people. I meet people like you all the time. And you are not like that. You're all in here. You're a skinny twerp. You're frail. You're weak. And of course, you're depressed, cynical, and you're a, f- and you're, you're a failure. And you're out here telling me that you're some in some way sophisticated because you possess enlightened knowledge. You're a fraud. You're pathetic and you deserve the pain that you're currently going through because the pain you're going through is actually your soul, like your girlfriend or your wife trying to wake you up. It's like you're some type of loser who sits at home all day watching TV and your wife's whining at you. She's stuck in the house with you. Your soul is like your wife stuck in the house with you being like, please get a job. Please do something else. Please stop sitting here watching TV all day. And you're like, why is my wife so angry? What's going on? Why is my soul at me all the time? What's going on? And then you're, you know, maybe texting your friends on WhatsApp. My, my wife's such a bitch. I'm so unhappy. I hate this relationship. It's like you're the bitch. You're the problem. You just need to get the fuck out of the house and go do something with your life instead of being stuck in your noggin. Your wife is pissed off because you're a failure. Your wife can feel in her body that you're a loser and she hates you and she's trying to motivate you to become better. And if you don't, her spite will turn on. She will feel ugly and depressed and bad about herself because she's bound to you. And she'd be like, what am I doing? She'll want to escape that. And this is what your soul is like. Your soul, the anima, is looking at you and saying, what a, what a pathetic piece of shit. What a worm. I I hate being trapped in here. I hate being this type of person. My God, that was a rant and a half. (laughs) All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a couple of comments to show you this exact thing, because this is a big, big theory I'm talking about. But you can see this ethos inside many of the people that are thinking this way. So first of all, I'm going to show you a, a lady, actually. This was one of the positive comments. This was Eve. Now, Eve says, at first, this seemed plain wrong and irrelevant to me as I'm finally been getting regular therapy without medication and other nonsense. And it's and it, it seems to be helping her, which is good. Look, if you feel feel good, that's great. But watching a second time, I think I understand. The soul is unhappy living inside a coward. The end. That really distills things. And I guess therapy can meander away from that. I can perhaps see a coward here who has all the answers but still wants, waits for more information. Yes, Eve. Eve is a Chad. Eve is a Chad the most of the men, the boys, who are commenting on this bullshit. Eve, you fucking badass. All right, go on, Eve. I could perhaps see a coward here who has all the answers but still waits for more information to be told who they are or at least get a second opinion rather than just going all in and just taking the necessary action. Hmm. And this is the thing, is that your life is simple. Your life goals are quite simple. Life comes in its primary first order. What you are, your DNA, your your body, your felt experience, your instincts, you're not that complicated. Life wants you to procreate. Life wants you to be successful. Life wants you to gain prestige in the tribe. Life wants you to be creative. Life wants you to form a connection with the higher power in this world. God himself wants to shine down within you. Life wants you to do things that stand for yourself. Life wants to you to maximize yourself as an individual, maximize your tribe, represent your DNA, if you want to put it this way, stand for things that are higher, lift up the power of life life and take life to a higher ascendancy, to a higher level of excellence. It's not that complicated. You feel this as ways, you feel this as you desiring to expand, you desiring to establish yourself, create a family, create presence, create a, uh, online status, create online status, create reputation and status in your community that can be done online. That's all that life really wants from you is to expand, to do things that are life positive. It's very easy for you to think about these t- things, get better food, get more success, get you know better sex, better sexual partners 
partners, better freedom, all these type of things. These are the things that life wants. And usually people get neurotically stuck in their heads and can't see the obvious things that they need to do for their life. And all they need to do is to sit down and try to execute upon those. What they'll quickly realize is that getting those things is very fucking hard because life is in competition with other life. So in order for you to get those things, you have to assert yourself. You have to go and take what you want. You have to go and demand things off life. You're often going to have to compete with other people. This is precisely why this stuff is difficult. And most people cower away from competing because competing is hard. It sucks to lose. It sucks. The stress of competing is difficult. And it's very easy for someone to not compete, to stand up and form a superiority complex and sort of look at those competing and say, I don't need to participate in that. But of course, what did I say earlier? When you don't compete, life begins to think she lives inside a coward and she'll start to make you feel bad. And then what will happen is you'll start to get punished with lower testosterone, negative voices inside your head, your soul arguing with you. And what's going to happen then as a, as a, as a consequence, as a derivative consequence of this, you're going to start feeling depressed. You're going to start getting stuck in your head and you're going to start wondering and pondering about your reality and trying to figure things out. And of course, this is going to lead you into that position where it's like, I'm depressed. I need a therapist. I need someone who I can sit down and I can blather my intellectual garbage back and forth at them and we can spend some time figuring out the riddles of what's going on inside my head where none of that stuff is going to help you at all. It's not a riddle that you need to figure out. You only need to figure out that riddle because Western society fucked you up because Western society is wrong in its first principle. That's that's it. That's, that's the whole mistake. And that riddle is not going to save you. You go to a therapist. Yes, they can talk. It can be nice to talk to people about this. And I agree with that, you know, and like, you know, I don't see there's anything wrong with going to talk to people about this. You can go to a priest in the Catholic world before and talk to him about these type of things. And it is genuinely nice to, talk, to voice these things. I enjoy talking about these things, but I'm talking to you about solutions. I'm trying to actually say to you exactly what you need to do in order to get a final solution to these issues. And it's very, very simple. Listen to your soul and do what it wants. And it's not complicated. And that's always action based. Always. Because that's what your life is. What does it mean to take assertive, creative action? A life of happy action is what you're seeking because that's the thing that gets you real results. And life ultimately wants results. She doesn't care about your theories. And this is such a big challenge for people, such a difficult challenge. And Eve is sitting down and thinking to herself, trying to see that I'm not trying to go out there and say to her, you know, oh, shoot your therapist or some shit like this. I'm trying to ask her, well, if, you're, if you were to listen to your soul, what does your soul want? And are you honestly, bravely going after that? And the answer is probably no. So she's a Chad. And I'll use her fucking benders. <laughs> um, let me see. Here's another one. So I see this an awful lot. I think you've been straw manning books and psychotherapy a bit recently. Uh, <laughs> as a PhD lit student, I don't read four hours a day to cope with life or escape it. I read because the art is beautiful. Through my PhD, I'm trying to redeem literature from the tarantulas and jargonites who dissect every book like a frog on a slab purely to serve their political agenda. If you're talking about people who haven't read 12 self-help books a year I haven't read, and haven't read Hamlet, then yeah, I totally get what you mean. Regarding psychotherapy, I mean, my mum's a therapist and she's never done anything like what you're saying. People are so out of touch with their souls these days. She spends most of her time trying to help them figure out what's even wrong and why they're miserable and losing at life. And then when she does, she's not like, oh, it's fine, you're beautiful, just as you are, namaste, or your problem is that you need to embrace the world in economic form. She rather makes them see that they have to become graver and stronger if they want to feel better. And like, fair play. If your mom's actually genuinely doing that, she's a chad. Now, I would say, this is a very common archetype. Like, as a PhD, I'm a sophisticated PhD, and, you know, there's more nuance to this conversation, Steph. The way that you're talking about this is is too blunt. You know, you need to you need to articulate it in a 20-minute explainer video or something like this. And, um, no, psychotherapy is like, you know, it's a deep, complicated topic. It's deep, you know, you're strawmanning these type of things. These these are more complicated. These are more sophisticated. You know, these, I, these reading these books, these are going to bring me up to the higher realms, the higher level, the higher power and all this type of stuff. This, you know, I read literature because art is beautiful and I'm, I'm going to save the world. I'm going to go in and I'm going to re go do a PhD and I'm going to redefine and save literature and all these type of things. And again, the black pill on this is that literature cannot come out of a people who have no soul. And currently Western people don't have a soul. The Western people are not going to 
create any new great literature anytime soon. Um, you are not going to set, it's change that by going in and getting a PhD. It's not an intellectual problem. All the intellectual problems you think you're dealing with, Nietzsche's already figured out. He has very clearly pointed them out. Like Western people have lost their soul. There's a reason why there's been nothing like Hamlet since the last, in the last 200 years, because Western people are in a place of chaos. They're in a place of nihilistic um, madness. And Nietzsche said himself very distinctly, the, the people who are, the philosophers of the future are not going to be PhD students. They're not going to come out of this schizophrenic Western culture. They're not, it's not going to be like that. These are going to be the people who find their own inner vitality. And in all likelihood, they're going to come from something much more organic, so something much more real. They might even come out of the, the sort of working world or something like this. To give you an example of what I mean, in ancient Rome, I'm sure there's many Romans who thought they were going to put together paganism. They were going to write some type of thesis that's going to save the, the Hellenistic paganism from the degenerate Christianity that they saw showing up. You probably won't understand this because, you know, you don't, you don't think as sophisticated as I do, but that's okay because you're spending all your time in a, in a fucking university, so you can't think. But these people in ancient Rome, there was even guys like, um, I think it was Justinian or... Julian the Apostate, that's who it was. He literally tried to orchestrate an entire redemption of the old Hellenistic pagan religion and tried to lift it all up and save it. And he it was a very intellectual approach, you know, and he was, he was actually quite a brave dude. He was a warrior, he was a soldier, he led armies and all this type of stuff, but he failed in the end because it just couldn't be saved. The Roman people were not good enough. They were just, they're, they're at the end of their life. It was the end of their life cycle. They didn't believe in themselves anymore. They lost their vitality. They didn't want to fight for their ideals. They had the Christians who were animated, who were young, who were fresh, the Christians who really believed in what was going on. They were like, you know, the the the, the liberals you see nowadays or the communists you see nowadays. They're hyper animated by their, their ideals. And these people were just dominating these 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 Romans because the old Romans were, were, were tired, were aged. They had been, you know, fat and well fed for a centuries at this point and all this literature and all the sophisticated universities that they set up Julian banned Christians from the university that didn't stop Christianity did it didn't save paganism did it none of that stuff worked because it's not the intellect that does any of these things who took over the Roman Empire? First of all, it's Christianity, which basically was like anti-intellectual in some sense. It had like, you know, it had a set of books, the Bible, that was dogmatic about and it wouldn't let you read anything else and went around burning all the other books. Like that, that defeated the intellectual part of Rome. And then on the other hand, you had a lot of barbarian Goths that came from the north, butt naked, wearing, you know, skins. And they defeated in the other side. And there was, where was the sophisticated PhD students? What did they do? They got defeated. They got dominated. They got ruled by Goths and their minds got dominated by Christians. Their minds got dominated by the masses religion and the, the Gothic barbarians from the north who came in with their swords, butt naked and fucking took over control. The vital gods who were full of power, who'd been living in life force, who didn't read, who couldn't read, the barbarians who couldn't read. And the gods took over and they were full of vital energy, so much vital energy that they basically ran civilization for 2,000 years off that. And you're telling me that like you're going to go in as a PhD student and solve these problems. And you're telling me that these things like, you know, books and psychotherapy, am I strawmanning them? No, I'm not. You overvalue them. You strawman the soul. That's your problem. And you're not going to solve any problems by, by doing that. None of, I, I'm telling you, you see all these people online, like talking about the meaning crisis, even Jordan Peterson to an extent, it's overly intellectual. It's trapped within the paradigm that's causing the problem, stuck in the head nogginists. These people cannot create. Their intellects wandering around in a miasma of confusion saying, we've got, we're stuck in a meaning crisis. We need to write new literature. We need to write, write more books. Write more books about Western civilization falling. See, does it make a fucking difference? It's not going to make a difference because it can't because the problem with the West is it's lost its soul. The problem with the West is it has no vitality. It has not got life force and if you don't have life force you are dead and you are going to die and there's nothing wrong with that that's completely natural you have to make peace with these things as well i have this is what nietzsche was trying to point out to you this is why nietzsche is the full stop on the philosophical project he articulated clearly what is happening he said in our situation all this overthinking you're going to see is not going to do anything we're going to spiral into nihilism regardless because the true operant first principle is the vitality within people's souls and our only and single project should be how do we redeem that vitality in our souls there's the fucking red pill
Marco Polo says, how dare you not believe blindly in the authority of psychotherapy? Don't you really have the authority attached to this field? Exactly, Marco. God damn you. No, no wonder you went and you, you um, discovered the East. No wonder you went and took the Silk Road. Good man, Marco. I hope all is well. Pete O'Hara. So we should definitely listen to a YouTuber instead. So, of course, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying listen to me. I'm saying listen to your soul. I don't give a fuck if you listen to me. You know, I'm right, of course. I know I'm right. I'm standing on this, but you don't have to listen to me. Go listen to yourself. You know, oh, I thought that was what all these cl- platitudes are trying to say. Just don't, don't, don't listen to anyone else. Listen to yourself. Trust yourself. Well, go do it then, you know? <laughs> like, actually go listen to yourself. Listen to what your own heart says to you. How about we go with that? How about we say it nice and pretty? Trust your heart, not your therapist. <laughs> Uh, yeah bro that's a no for me some people need help and there's absolutely absolutely nothing wrong with that and it's like look (laughs) it's absolutely true i've met people out there that have been in bad spots there's definitely some people there's a exception out there that definitely definitely need people to to hand them around it's like a disabled person they are literally disabled incapable that is absolutely true the problem in western culture right now is that the a, there's, I'd say 90% of people who engage with psychology and engage with therapy and all these type of things do not need it. And they're actually cowards, spiritless cowards. And this is the reason why Western culture is falling apart, because they lack soul and they lack spirit. Psychology is not going to fix that. Psychology is a detriment. Psychology is like a drug that allows them to escape from this true problem. Your problem is not that you need to talk to someone or do any of this type of stuff. Your problem is that you're a coward. You're susceptible society is falling apart because of your cowardice in some sense i don't mind because i know like you're you, so many people are so weak that it's almost inevitable at this point that that's going to happen what is going to happen is that there will be a few people like the gods who are vital who are going to claim the future i am talking to them i don't give a fuck about the people in therapy but i know for certain that 90 percent of them don't need to be there and i know this because i've spent thousands of hours speaking to people thousands of hours working with people thousands of hours down in the trenches communicating with people with this type of stuff and I think it's baloney I think it's nonsense I don't want to be a part of it I'm not engaged with it at all I don't agree with it I don't agree with any of the first principles the way that people think when they spend an awful lot of time in these fields it destroys them they have no way of grounding themselves in the reality and they don't listen to themselves and they're fundamentally pussies they're fundamentally cowards they destroy themselves and it is not something I want to, to engage in the amount of times I spoke to people who said that they're schizophrenic schizophrenic which is a very serious thing when you hear it and I would ask them something very simple the first thing these would be people who had been with doctors and all this type of stuff and i say to them okay let's start from the beginning how do you eat and what causes your uh, how does that relate to your schizophrenia and they'll all be like i drink coca-cola and i drink pizza and i'm like what and it's like my schizophrenia is triggered by weed and i smoke weed every day and i'm like has anyone ever told you not to smoke weed to how to eat properly and like not stay up all night watching fucking netflix till 4 a.m and they're like, no, no one actually ever brought that up with me, you know? They just put me on pills. And they told me that they sat down and they started to talk to me about the delusions. And it's like, look, your delusions, fucking, maybe it's a Jungian hero's journey or some shit. But at the same time, what happens if we actually just heal your body? Maybe you'll stop having schizophrenic delusions. And I, there's a dude you can check out on Twitter called Grim Hood, I think it is. He talks about magnesium. He had schizophrenia. He literally had schizophrenia. He started to waste away. He couldn't eat. He got down to like, I don't know, I think it might have been 70 pounds. He was very, very light. Dangerously light. Like deathly light. And he healed the schizophrenia by, first of all, getting rid of blue light, stopping stopping staying up all night, staring at fucking screens and stuff like this. Got his sleep cycle in order. Started to eat properly. Started to get his supplementation in order and corrected himself and obviously worked in his mind quite a lot. And worked with himself and fought for himself and stood for himself. And he came back from schizophrenia. He solved his own schizophrenia. He made it go away. And he didn't sit down and say there was some profound meaning in his psychosis and his delusions. He just sort of said, man, I was just being a fucking idiot and not treating myself properly. Now, this is really fucking important because so many people lack this stuff. And I see this. Schizophrenia is an extreme example. But I've spoke to a lot of people who are depressed. It's the exact same thing. You know, they're on SSRIs. It's like, how do you eat? Well, I eat like shit. Well, they wouldn't know that. They're like, I eat well. And you talk to them about how they eat. And it's like, bro, you eat like shit. How, how, how like, are you, you know, are you brave? What's your exercise regime? Don't have one. Are you brave? Like, how do, how do you deal with conflict in your life? Oh, I, I can't. I'm depressed. It's like, would you fucking... Like, do you make any decisions? Do you make any choices at all? It's no. I'm disempowered. I'm depressed. I use this word in order to allow me to take in action and allow me to be the submissive, coward, spiritual slave that, that, I, that I'm stuck as. It's like, look, bro... You, 
you're going to have to look you may as well kill yourself then because you have two options either you're going to go out and kill yourself taking action or you're going to just waste away like you are now life is not you there's no static state if you keep on going the direction you're going life is going to reward you less and less and less and start to punish you and turn you into the spiritual slave that she hates because she wants you to get out of the gene pool she wants you to go away if you accept that fate if you accept that from your soul that's fine that's that's your prerogative but we can't call that depressed that's you giving up that's you surrendering to life and that's completely in your hands and completely your choice and of course none of none of the things you're doing are supplying this you've you're not making decisions you're not starting the fight in your life you're not fighting for yourself at all how how am i supposed to save you why should i care you're not fighting for yourself i've met so many people who come to me and i speak to them and i'm and they're fighting for themselves and it makes me want to fight for them like, I feel that as power because I was there once. I, f I came through the education system. I found it hard. And I was down and I was saying to myself, what am I going to do? Who am I? What's going on? And I fought for myself and I tried to figure a way out. And I listened to my own heart and I went after my fears and I went after excellence and went to develop my capacity to, to, to become better. I did all these type of things and I fought for myself. And everybody who I came across who helped me saw that inside of me and tried their best. Some, some of them even did it for free at times. And it's the same with myself. When I see people struggling, but they're fighting for themselves, they want, they don't want to die. They have a soul still. They're connected with their soul and they're working with it. I want to lift them. I want to help them. I want to pull them through, but I'm not going to do it otherwise. So it's more reasonable to listen to you, some English teacher who watched too much Jordan Peterson content, than it is a professional who studies psychotherapy. Sorry, I'm not interested in your cult. <laughs> oh, shit. You saw. Her Hermes saw through it. He saw through it. This is what it is. So again, I, like, I'm not saying to listen to me. You know, I'm obviously right. It's clear that I'm correct. But I'm not actually telling you, come and listen to my fucking cult or some shit like this. You should. But I'm not telling you that. I'm saying, listen to your soul, your own soul. Because life has put inside of you a set of instincts, voices inside of your own body that tell you exactly what to do. They tell you all of this stuff. If you just fucking listen, it's so obvious. Your whole life, this dialogue has been happening with you. Before you came across me, I only articulated in my own language. And it's, it's there. And you don't need a therapist to tell you that. And you don't need me to tell you that. For some reason, you fucking do because you got miseducated. But literally, if you're just honest, this is the thing. You're not an honest person. You're not sincere. You are a coward who does not listen to yourself. You're stuck in your head. And you think that, like, look, look at the frame here. I have to listen to a professional or I have to listen to Uberboyo or I have to listen to Jordan Peterson. It's like it's always external validation centers, external authorities. You don't have your own, you don't have your own conscience. You're not a real person. You're just a copy of whoever you're listening to at that point. And I'm literally saying to you, stop listening to everybody. Stop reading the books. Stop listening to Jordan Peterson. Stop listening to Steph. It's a mistake, but stop listening to him. I don't mind. You'll be fine without me. You don't need Steph's YouTube channel. I like, honest to God, you don't. Your soul is smarter than me. There's more wisdom in your body than a thousand books. And this is fucking true. Your soul has lived through billions of years of evolution. Most of these books are lifetimes, are just dudes like in one lifetime articulating some thoughts poorly often that they think about your life. But it's not, it's not going to change anything. Reading Marcus Aurelius is not going to make you stoic. Your ability to regulate and manage and deal with your emotions is what will make you stoic. And your emotions happen in your soul. You need to listen to your soul. This is what I'm saying. Or maybe you don't have a soul or something like that. Well, then that's fucking your problem. Like, and, and again, it comes down to that frame, like a professional who studies psychotherapy. If someone goes into the education system and gets brainwashed by all this stuff, like I got honest to God, lads, I've sat through psychotherapy. It's a, it's a joke. It's, it's a fake. It's not real. It doesn't work. It's not, it's like, it's just, <laughs> it's just delusion. It's a cultural psychosis that's going on. Again, if you want to model it out, Christianity had its own system of therapy that was confession. You can go to that for free still if you want, and you'll probably get similar benefits because the, the biggest benefit of something like psychotherapy is just talking to someone. This is well studied because it's just bunkus. It's just baloney. It's just shite. It's not real. So the, the biggest help is just chatting to someone. Go chat to your mum. 
You know, maybe maybe try that. If you if maybe you don't get on with your mom, go chat to a priest. If your priest is all fucking caught up with the the modern bullshit agenda, see if you can t- talk to a friend. And then if you're really struggling at that, try to find a good therapist and chat with them. But understand, you're not solving any problems. You're not doing any work. Oh, I'm working with I'm doing work with a therapist. No, you're not. You're just externalizing your internal pain because you're not intelligent or honest or sophisticated enough to deal with it, deal with it yourself. And that's okay. A lot of people aren't. But that's the truth. I'm being honest with you, you know? You're just not capable of managing that with yourself. Maybe you don't have the IQ or something like this. Or EQ, whatever it is. And so you external, you need someone else's like a whiteboard to externalize it. You could try writing. You could try journaling if you wanted. Maybe that would help you. A lot of people find solace in that. It's like self-therapy. You could try fucking starting a YouTube channel and seeing how that goes and just externalize that type of stuff. Just be careful you're not projecting your, your, your delusions and disease out there. I'm definitely not doing that. But the thing is, is that there's no, there's no valid, again, it's that validation thing, that qualification thing, you know? Oh, a psychotherapist is someone who spends a long period of time in the education system, therefore they're qualified, they're sophisticated, science is on their sides. Sci- science is on their side, yeah, so the, the science stands up for them, the science TM stands up for them. But this, this is, again, Nietzsche, Nietzsche's Nietzsche a G. Nietzsche points all this out, like science has not, science has de- de- decredited itself, it's delegitimate. No one, no one I see who I consider truly intelligent takes science anywhere as seriously as they used to. Science is now heavily instantiated with political propaganda. That's first thing. Second of all, science is not immune to delusion. Science is not immune to devious thinking. That's built into it at this point, especially with like democratic systems like peer review, which is just stupid. That's not how science was run before. That's you know, that's literally that's literally groupthink instantiated into a system. It's not going to work. It doesn't work that way then. The geniuses of science from the past, they were something else. We don't have those anymore. Why? Because of the way that we do it. Science was cool a hundred years ago, so people did, and people did it properly. It's starting to lose its, its charm now. It's starting to lose its, its abilities. So I'll wrap this up by talking to the aspiring psychologist, the young guy who wants to go out and save people, wants to become a psychologist to help people work on themselves and stuff like this. And this is the most absurd thing I have ever ever heard. I never tried to be a psychologist when I was younger. I was never trying to help people. I was never interested in doing that because I had not helped myself. I had not become something worthy. I had not gone through the challenges. I would not lived a life. I think living a life is a, a premier importance. And most of these people, these <laughs> PhD students, these university students who are sitting around, snotty, thinking they're intelligent, thinking that if they sit down in university and become qualified that that means that they're validated is the perfect signal of everything wrong with western culture these people are validated not by life experience they are not initiated into the baptism of fire which is real life they don't go and do brave courageous things like learning to be a warrior these type of things instead what they do is they hide away in their universities and they start to form a arrogance they start to form a ego of all things you'd imagine the psychologist would figure that one out but no instead what happens is they go they hide away in their ivory tower they start to grow this tumorous cancerous ego about themselves because they inflate their heads with a, little, with a load of books and then they start to get this sort of um, salvation complex they're like a priest of old the most annoying type of priest a priest who stays in his monastery a priest who stays in his institution reads all the books and he's basically a loser he's a, a celibate a creep an incel who goes out then and starts to preach into the world about how the world should work he moralizes he goes and tells people how the world should be orchestrated and all this and you contrast him with the old vision of the warrior you notice young men never want to be priests priests are not exactly a heroic and admirable character and young men don't necessarily want to be psychologists either they are not admirable characters because they are usually cowards they are usually people who ran away from life and they go and they become essentially a feminine role where they sit down and they they become a talk therapist that can help people you know a a pay for you friend or something like this and in order for them to satisfy the fact in order for them to keep their heads coherent for the fact that they are not brave that they didn't go down that path of being a warrior they didn't go down that path of being creative they didn't go down that path of doing something with themselves they create this superiority complex where they are the man of knowledge they're the man who understands the magic jargon that uh, articulates how exactly your mind works but of course they don't achieve any of this stuff they never help people and they only form a very very basic role which is a sort of social lubricant of some sort which is what which is what what the priest did in the past and if you 
are that person and maybe you have a sincere intention where you want to help people you're probably not going to achieve it using psychology becoming a therapist you're essentially a loser who's achieved nothing you've done nothing with your life your life you've done nothing heroic you've never pushed yourself in any serious way you've never gone out and confronted the real world you know nothing about these type of things and you're going to go and get overeducated and then sit in one of these positions as a therapist of some sort and ruin ruin more people's lives get, help people help keep people lost and i don't really care because it's slave morality the people who have spiritual slavery within their souls will get pulled down regardless because they deny their souls and you will just be the denny's end that locks them in the entity that grabs them when they fall low enough and holds them down and then starts to you know like a parasite bleed in insane insane theories about how their mind works and keeps them locked in you and them bound together down in hell i don't mind that at all that is your prerogative that is your destiny so be it but i'm telling you that if you genuinely have that spirit inside you where you want to transform people you want to see people's souls unleashed you want to see people become animated you want to see the world become a more juicy and powerful place i would not recommend you become a psychologist or a therapist i would actually recommend you go and do something far more that would requires bravery that requires stress that requires struggle of some sort how is it a struggle to sit around reading books how is it difficult to go to college college is not difficult college is a waste of time college is a coward's behavior go and become a feckin personal trainer or at least you have to get in shape go and become a, a boxer go and be, try to become a musician or something like this try and stress yourself by conquering the world try some type of effort that requires heroism the court requires bravery a fucking pickup artist can give you more insight about your soul than a psychologist because at the very least they're going out there and trying their best to, to deal with the problem of woman or something like this. These guys take steps into the world and tackle real problems and they actually get somewhere. And if you're sitting around and you're just reading books, you're just being a nobody, you're just sitting there being a theory cell, you're not going to be of any worth. You're not going to help anyone. You're going to be, you're going to, it's like a, uh, you, you, you don't really even realize it, but you turn into a, a cancer, a virus that holds people back. And even though you don't know it, you're spreading a disease, you're spreading bad ideas, you're spreading dirt, you're spreading filth, you're sinking people down into the slave morality, which is the psychological and industrial complex that rules the world. So look, that's my final thoughts on it. I'm not going to rant anymore because I'll, I will, I will ramble. I could ramble all day about this shit. So I hope you enjoy you probably did not enjoy that one actually no I, I hope you uh i hope you gained some insight i actually don't hope for anything fuck you i don't give a shit there there is the reality that's how psychology works stage you